think that every student in Lancaster County deserves amazing learning technology. And our students should be trusted and given the freedom to explore and experiment with their school-issued computers. Just imagine how we can help our kids launch fantastic careers in science and technology and engineering. But budget and policy barriers prevent this from being a reality in most schools. Technology is expensive. Schools are being asked to do more with less, yet costly commercial software can choke school budgets. And on top of that, vendor software subscription models chain schools to commercially controlled systems and platforms. We need cheaper, better, and more flexible options. We need options that don't break the bank. Even worse, classroom computers are typically locked down. Our students are restricted from exploring and experimenting with school computers. And this processing is incredibly bizarre. We hand our kids these tremendous learning devices, but yet we tell them to not lift the hood, to not explore the computer, to not learn about computing. So together, these problems create a costly chain of vendor software lock-in and student learning lockout. How do we break free? I'd like to tell you the story of how Penn Manor High School solved these problems and launched the state's largest free software one-to-one -one laptop learning program. Our answers didn't come from an app, from a corporation or legislation. They came from the free and open source software community and a unique partnership with a group of remarkable high school students. Now, one-to-one -one laptop programs are nothing new. They've been around in education for decades. But when we set a course to give every one of our 1,700 high school students a computer that they would use both in school and also take home, I knew we needed to get creative to make this happen. Technology acquisition costs, repairs, policies, security, all these issues are enough to cause a school IT director to lose sleep, and maybe even a little hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I also knew that sometimes the best things in life are free. For years, though, the free and open source software community has gotten a bad rap. It's often been misunderstood and associated with mad, degenerate hackers, these weird people spending dark nights scheming up nefarious plots for social disruption. But the reality is vastly different. Free and open source software is a philosophy about liberty. It allows us to open and examine software code, to learn from it, to drive innovation. Open licensing says it's OK for us to study and review code, modify it, and use it for our own purposes. Importantly, it transfers power and control from corporations and gives that software control to the public, to the community, and to schools. Zero cost and open learning. It's a perfect combination for a school technology program. On our student laptops, we loaded Linux. It's the free alternative to the Windows operating system. It's also the engine that powers the vast majority of the internet servers. It's secure, and it's incredibly flexible. And it allowed us to customize and personalize our laptops for our unique student learning needs. And on top of this base, we added dozens of outstanding open educational software programs. Fantastic programs like LibreOffice, a free alternative to Microsoft Office. Audio and video programs. And of course, science and coding and programming toolkits. All of these were without cost, a subscription fee, or an upgrade bill. And by relying exclusively on open source software and saying no to costly commercial programs, we were able to save $360,000 in our program's first year alone. Those are funds that we could reinvest in other fantastic programs and initiatives to benefit our kids. But these tremendous cost savings, they're simply a prelude to our story. When you push the boundaries of conventional practice, you break new ground. We pushed beyond the conventional practices of school technology, and we gave our kids the ability to deeply explore and experiment with their school computers. But why do we do this? For a moment, I need you to think back with me to a time when you were young, and you had a favorite toy. 
and you perhaps took that favorite toy apart to uncover what made it tick, or what made it work. Right? Maybe you tried to take that toy and extend it and modify it to do something it didn't originally do. Later in life, this experiment was tinkering with the engine on your family car, maybe unsuccessfully. <laughs> you see, though, our knowledge is born from our experiences. The process of deconstruction and reconstruction, it's intensely powerful. Building things is how we learn. Yet schools commonly restrict students and prevent this type of experimentation. They prevent kids from lifting the lid on their computers, or they give them a laptop or a tablet that's locked down, or only running the software that a school administrator says should run. The building blocks of technology, coding and programming, they're literally locked under glass. And this draconian practice, it stifles our students' creativity, their ability to explore and learn through software, to tinker and modify their computers. Imagine a NASCAR driver who didn't have the ability to tune or modify the engine on her race car. Without the ability to tune or modify their school computers, our students are simply riders on a programmer's virtual bus. We decided early on in our program that we wanted our kids to be innovators and inventors, and not technology tourists. Here's where we broke from tradition. Every one of our 1,700 high school students has an administrator account on their laptops. They're root, and they're free to install software, change up the operating system, and reconfigure their laptops. My team and I encourage them to code or to run little mini web servers on their school technology, or even install learning games. We brought all of our students together at the beginning of this project for a class meeting, and we explained this open philosophy to them. And we started the conversations with the words, we trust you. We broke the software locks. We honored their inquisitive nature and their thirst for discovery. And we empowered them to go forth and build something amazing with their school technology. And with that, we arrive at the secret behind our program's success. That's our student technology apprenticeship program. At the beginning of the academic year, we launched our program with a small pilot of about 90 students juniors and seniors that receive laptops ahead of the full student body. And at the time, we also spun up a peer support help desk program. What better way for our kids to learn the art and the science of computing than through an apprenticeship side by side with my IT team and I? Now, the apprenticeship program, the tech support help desk, this is actually a course. It's a class that appears on the student's schedules. And they show up for class just like they would a math or an English class. But it's so much more than that. We trust our student apprentices implicitly and treat them as true IT team equals. And these remarkable kids have earned truckloads of respect from my team and I. Many of them have volunteered over 400 hours of their own time, working side by side with my staff and I. Much of this has been occurring over the summer for the past several years. For our one-to-one -one program on day one, our tremendous apprentices were right beside us, not only providing peer support to their fellow students, but also helping us to configure and fine-tune our laptops as we ramped up to the full program launch. And with our student apprentices and a number of community volunteers, my tech team and I, we came together on a stormy January weekend in our school cafeteria for an incredible laptop setup event. I want to show you what it looks like when you mix 10 passionate student apprentices with 1,700 laptops, 11 pizzas, 24 liters of soda, and oh my gosh, so many snacks. Teenagers can eat. <laughs> we built our own laptop setup factory. And during a two-day marathon, the apprentices and my team and community volunteers, we worked together to scan and inventory and image and prepare every one of these laptops before they were distributed out to the entire student body. I can't tell you how powerful this collective learning experience was. Traditional roles of teacher and pupil, they were completely flattened. They were kicked to the curb. Our kids owned this process. They were full participants. They were intensely passionate about building and preparing the systems that every one of their peers would be using in a few short weeks. This wasn't a homework assignment. This was a fellowship. 
And during the process, we needed to figure out how we're going to mass copy our software to every single one of these hundreds and hundreds of laptops. Obviously not something we wanted to do by hand, one by one by one. So one of our remarkable apprentices, Andrew Lobos, he came up with a solution with us. Andrew took the building blocks of free and open source software and stitched them together to create a new program that we call the Fast Linux Deployment Toolkit. It's a software engine that allowed us to rapidly pump our programs, our software, out to batches of 50 laptops at a time. And this copy, this duplication process, only took three minutes per batch. It's remarkable work for a high school senior. Some schools get together with their community and they grow vegetables through community gardens. We get together and we grow software. Our apprentices, Andrew and others, his programming partner, Ben Thomas, they're working on other fantastic programs for our student body. Together and with my team, they actually wrote the ticket system, the help desk system, that every one of our students use when they need to request technical troubleshooting help. And they've been working with other members of my staff on a little sharing program called Paper Plane. It's a web-based program that allows teachers and students to securely share documents and resources in the classroom. Now, this might sound like this program is entirely about high technology. That's a big part of it. But our apprentices are also learning other incredible skills. They're learning logistics and project planning. They're learning communication and they're honing their writing skills. And on top of all that, they're learning to be leaders. When our distribution day arrived and we were ready to hand all these machines out to our entire high school, some of our superstars, like Nick Joniak, they were front and center in the role of a teacher. Nick and the others were leading the training and orientation sessions that every one of their peers were attending as they received their laptop. Can you imagine how their self-confidence and their self-esteem grew through a program such as this? I couldn't write a curriculum as rich as our students' daily support experiences on the help desk. Their textbook is the internet. They borrow ideas freely shared by the open source software community. And they remix that work into their own work. And this is very high level work. I love that they're playing with the same coding frameworks and the same technology support tricks that industry professionals use in the real world. And I have to say, last time I checked, PSSA assessments and Common Core doesn't address things such as debugging PHP code or Linux desktop environments and batch scripting. Now, of course, my team and I are there as guides and facilitators. We're there as teachers. But we're not standing over their shoulder and tallying up points for the day or grading every little success or failure. In fact, our students' failures, their little failures, their bugs, they help to make our program stronger. Code either executes or crashes. A troubleshooting step either works or it doesn't. It sends us all back to the drawing board to refine and improve our processes. Talk about learning practical problem solving. And let's talk about impact. Our students are creating the learning environment for 1,700 of their peers. Their work touches every single one of our high school students. And let's talk about engagement. We're four weeks out from graduation, and our apprentices are still working hard to refine and improve our software programs and to make our, our laptops more robust. How many high school students do you know that are working this hard four weeks away from graduation? I'm so proud to report that in the spirit of the open source community, we're paying it forward, and we're making our code available on the GitHub website. I hope that other educators and students throughout the county will join with us and maybe learn and study and hopefully reuse this code in their own schools. I think there's so much that we could develop and learn together, especially with other rock star student apprentices perhaps in every single one of our schools. For me personally, working alongside our student apprentices and learning alongside them, it's been the most profound experience of my entire career in education. The synergy between my team and these students, it's simply magical to watch. The open source community helped to liberate us from costly and inflexible commercial software. Along the way, we discovered that open source can open students' minds. Our incredible technology apprentices, though, they helped us make learning free for entire school. I think they deserve an A.
Thank you.